Endeavor ISS, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Not quite ready. We are ready for the event now. Gannett, this is Houston. Please call Endeavor ISS for a voice check. Endeavor ISS, this is Gannett. How do you hear me? Loud and clear, Todd. How me? We hear you well. This is Todd Halverson for Florida Today, USA Today, and Gannett newspapers and television stations around the country box. Let's get right to it. You'll be doing the fly-around of the International Space Station here in a day or so, um, and you'll be getting the first big picture of the station after U.S. assembly complete. How big a deal is that to you personally, and could you give us an idea of what that might look like? Well, the station is huge, Todd. Um, it's much bigger than I expected. You know, we've added a module here and a PMM there uh, and a few other items. And, and this is a huge complex. Uh, this node right behind me, uh, node one, has five different ports portals from which to you can go into different modules and uh, I can tell you I turn the wrong way almost 50 percent of the time it seems uh, so it's a huge space station we've got all the solar arrays it's much bigger than it was last time I was here about three years ago and so it's going to be a really exciting fly around I'm going to do my best to try to uh, work the fly around so that uh, yes we want to conserve gas but I'm going to use that gas to to try to maintain a good uh, position so that we can get uh, great photos of uh, one of the final fly arounds of the space station. Um, you and Commander Kelly will be pulling off a bit of a shuttle first after the fly around. Tell us about that and, and why that uh, detailed test objective is important to the next generation of NASA crew exploration vehicles. Well, uh, this, the space program, even though we uh, do very complex things, we're in the infancy of what we're going to eventually uh, be able to accomplish. Uh, and uh, just like uh, the uh, airplane industry, uh, we have test missions. I'm an Air Force test pilot, and we often test systems that would be installed on a future vehicle. Uh, and we test them on the current vehicles that we have, and those next vehicles build on the shoulders of those uh, systems that preceded them. And so in this case, uh, with the storm system, uh, we're using a new sensor uh, that we are going to uh, uh, test this uh, new sensor and use it on uh, a potential uh, future vehicle. Um, Box, this is, uh, of course, your, your second flight, and, and both, of course, have been a, on Endeavor. I'm wondering what your thoughts are about bringing the uh, ship home for its 25th and final landing. Well, I think it's uh, very exciting. You know, the space shuttle has been a mainstay uh, of, uh, of moving things up and down, of building the space station. Uh, the space shuttle has been going on for now uh, almost, uh, you know, well, around 30 years. And so uh, being a part of one of the final flights is very important to me. I apologize for some of the background uh, sound. Normally we try to do these uh, PR events in a more isolated location, but we actually have a lot of activity going on right now in the space station. Uh, we're working on Cedra, we're doing transfer, and we're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, I know it's been a really busy mission for you, Box. Um, I'm, I'm wondering uh, what your thoughts are about the uh, future of human spaceflight when it, when it comes to uh, NASA and what role you might like to play in that future. Could you please uh, repeat the question because we're working on a little comm issue here. Sure. I was just uh, wondering what your thoughts are about the uh, future of U.S. human spaceflight, and uh, what uh, role you would like to play in that future? Well, you know, I'm uh, 
I'm 49 years old, and uh, I would love to be a part of one of the future vehicles. Um, I would love to step on a planet. I would love to have uh, a, a spacewalk or two. I'd love to live on the, on the space station for uh, six months at a time. Um, there are uh, limited opportunities, however, and, and uh, although I'd love to go uh, do those things, uh, um, the, the line is long um, it, it, with NASA as far as flying on a future vehicle. Nonetheless, if they give me the opportunity and, and the timing is right and, and, the, and all the factors line up, I would love to live on the space station uh, for a longer, longer period of time or even uh, fly a new vehicle. You know, there are new vehicles out there. The commercial companies are working on new vehicles. Um, there's many interesting designs, and that would be uh, uh, interest me in either flying one of those vehicles or being involved in the design of one of those future vehicles. You know, within the next 50 years, I think we'll find spaceflight is quite uh, commonplace. And uh, just like the airline industry, you know, people didn't fly much in the 30s. And now for a, a week's salary uh, from a, a, a regular uh, minimum wage job, you can fly across the country. Um, and so um, I'm hoping that space transportation will uh, grow over the next uh, uh, five decades and century and, 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 and we'll all be flying in space. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. Please stand by for a voice check from KPRC. The local news level, we do it at the national news level. When you need us, we're here. KPRC Local 2 News and NBC Nightly News. This morning, we are getting a special opportunity to talk to the Endeavor shuttle astronaut live from space. Pilot Greg Johnson is joining us live now. Thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here, Danielle. Thank you for uh, being with us. How is the mission going? Well, it's been a fantastic mission. You know, it's it's the sort of mission that uh, astronauts dream of having, and uh, it's very similar to my last mission, and, and then some. Uh, we've had four spacewalks. We've installed one of the most important scientific uh, experiments that uh, we've had to date on the space station, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Uh, we've done some really fun robotics. We've installed a whole bunch of pieces and parts for the space station. And finally, we actually just a couple days ago installed the, the, the final piece that's going to uh, basically mark the completion of the space station assembly. So this mission has been an incredible mission. We have a wonderful mix of players. We have an Italian astronaut, some very talented veterans. Everybody on my crew has already uh, flown uh, uh, in space before, either on the Soyuz or, or on the space shuttle. And so uh, it's just a magnificent uh, uh, flight. And right now we're kind of winding down. We've completed all our spacewalks and robotics. But guys are working all over the space station, trying to spend those last two days getting uh, the final touches, everything that we can do to help the space station out before we return to Earth. Hey, Greg, tell me how does it feel to be a part of Endeavor's final mission? You know, uh, Endeavor has, uh, uh, is near and dear to my heart. Um, it's the newest space shuttle. And about 10 years ago, when I was a fir first a pilot uh, in, in the astronaut office, uh, one of the duties I had w was to help astronauts strap in and get ready for flight. And that included setting uh, various switches uh, all over the space shuttle. There's about 2,000 of them. Uh, and then uh, basically occupying the space shuttle for the 24 hours prior to launch. Uh, and so I got to know and love all of the space shuttles, but I have to say that Endeavour was my favorite. And so having flown my first flight in Endeavour and then now flying the final flight of Endeavour, I feel very honored. That is really special. And I know a lot of people want to know about Commander Mark Kelly. He was able to speak with his wife, uh, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, yesterday. What can you tell us about that? How's he doing? Mark's doing great. He's a uh, seasoned combat fighter pilot. 
He knows how to compartmentalize what his what he's doing in his personal life uh, with his job. He's very dedicated. Um, he is taking care of some issues uh, at home, but his focus is on this mission, and uh, and he's doing great. You know, he was he took a few weeks um, after the shooting to deal with some uh, immediate action uh, necessary uh, situations, but he's completely with us. He's a strong leader. We have a strong team and uh, the success of all, all, all the things that have happened up to this point uh, indicate that uh, things are going well and, and Mark's doing a great job. All right, Greg. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Be safe out there and have a safe trip home. Let's check in one more time with meteorologist Mary Lee before we go. All right. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KPRC TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Voice of America. Endeavor, Endeavor ISS, this is VOA Washington. How do you hear me? I uh, read you loud and clear. How me? Loud and clear, sir. Welcome uh, to Voice of America. Wanted to, uh, since this is radio, wanted to ask you, what is it like to look at the Earth from the space station. Can you describe it for my listeners? It's absolutely incredible, David. I'll tell you. Um, my last flight up here, uh, it was wonderful, and uh, we spent some time looking out the window, but your, your first flight as an astronaut, you're really focused on getting things uh, done right, and uh, maybe a little bit more intimidation uh, than uh, subsequent flights. This flight, we are equally focused, but I've, I've been able to relax a little bit and, and look out the window. Also, we have a new cupola on board. It's a magnificent space, uh, sits at the bottom of the space station, looking at the Earth. There's seven windows. It's a 360-degree view. And I, because I'm a robotic operator, I've spent quite a bit of time down in the cupola. And so uh, looking at the Earth, uh, the beautiful backdrop of the Earth as I'm performing my job. And so all I can say is um, it's, it's a wonderful experience to look at our Earth. Uh, one of my favorite places on the planet is a place uh, in northern Michigan, uh, Long Lake in Traverse City. And uh, it chokes me up to thinking about it. I flew right over it yesterday and got some great photos of, of a wonderful place on our planet. Do you think of Earth any differently having seen it from space? Yes, I, I think that has to be true. You know, when you look at the Earth uh, from space, you kind of, you recognize a few things. You recognize how vast our planet is and how many different cultures there are and different um, ecosystems and you, you look down at the Sahara Desert and you look in the northern uh, portion of our country uh, and you look at all the lights all over and you know that you, you have to know the sense that we have really civilized this planet. However, you also, on the same token, understand and, and appreciate how fragile uh, the planet is. When you look at the Earth, Earth's horizon and, and see the, the thickness of the atmosphere, it's just like it's, it's not even the thickness of an orange peel. And so that fragile, uh, that fragile atmosphere um, makes me want to uh, uh, think greener and do greener things and makes me better understand why it's so important for us to take care of our planet. What inspired you to get involved in the space program? Well, my very first inspiration happened when I was seven years old, so that kind of dates me, David. Um, when I was seven in 1969, I was in, uh, in Michigan, uh, in a different city, Cairo, Michigan, uh, watching a black and white TV uh, with my grandparents and, and my brother and sister and my parents. And we watched the, the first lunar landing. And uh, my brother and I thought, wow, that would be a really cool thing to do. It was always a dream, but I was always interested in science and um, airplanes when I was in high school and wanted to go fly and go work for the Air Force. And, uh, and then this uh, was really uh, the ultimate um, 
dream of mine that became reality just by uh, trying trying to to do the things that I love doing. That was flying and engineering and and science. What do you miss the most on Earth when you're in space? Is it a favorite food? Is it your family? Is it uh, your hometown? What is it? I think it's my friends and family. I've got some very close friends um, all all over the world, and uh, and I love my family dearly. Uh, we're very close. Um, and I, ha including all my extended family members, you know, when we have launches, it's kind of like a, a big wedding because you get all your family and friends coming to the launch. And we actually had two launch attempts. Well, the, the second one was successful. The first one we got scrubbed. And so this whole launch process has enabled me to communicate with a lot of old friends and family members that I haven't been in touch with. So, yeah, I miss them all. What's the one thing you'll remember most about uh, either this mission in space or being in the space program? I think what I'll miss uh, most about uh, the space program at this point is the space shuttle because for certain I know that I'm not going to get another chance to fly the space shuttle. Space shuttle is a wonderful vehicle. A magnificent design, and although 30 years old, she's the workhorse of moving things up and down to and from the space station. Once uh, the space shuttle retires after next flight, STS-135, the final space shuttle flight, um, we're going to lose capability uh, in moving things uh, up to space. We have the Russians with the Soyuz. We're working on new uh, designs, but, but uh, we're going to sorely miss the space shuttle. Any surprises this mission? Any any wows that you uh, weren't expecting? You know, uh, most ascents, there are some uh, malfunctions. I remember my last flight, STS-123, we lifted off the launch pad, did the roll program, and right there we got a master alarm, and it was w in one of the systems uh, as a pilot that I monitor. So uh, I was a little bit like a deer staring at headlights for a few seconds because I only expected to get a master alarm uh, uh, in, in the simulator, but not on my first space shuttle flight. This flight, however, although we, all of us talked about how we would probably have something that would break on the way up, nothing did. Everything operated absolutely perfectly, and there were no cautions, no warnings, nothing. And the external tank uh, separation was nominal, so everything was picture-perfect nominal all the way to the space station. And so I, I was really impressed. I was surprised that nothing broke. Now, we have had some minor malfunctions. We've had some comm problems um, on the space shuttle uh, mid-deck and, and a few other items, but uh, they've all been relatively minor, nothing major. Anything special you want to say on this Memorial Day weekend? You know, I hope everybody's having a good time back at uh, planet Earth. Um, I am having a wonderful uh, Memorial Day weekend uh, here in space. Um, it's bittersweet right now. We're teeming with activity, though, not doing spacewalks, not doing robotics, but we're spending our final hours, the whole crew together with the space station, my shuttle crew, as well as the whole space station crew, we're working, uh, fixing things. We've got some guys who have been uh, on the space station for uh, a combined total of 18 months that are fixing an important part of the space station uh, right now. And then other guys are doing their part to get as much done as possible to spend these moments uh, as, as best as we can uh, for the final day and a half. But it's bittersweet, and we're going to undock in two days. All right. Thank you very much. That is Colonel Gregory Johnson on board the Space Shuttle Endeavor. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Gannett, KPRC-TV, and Voice of America. Endeavor ISS, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>